Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups and he has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study in a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join at https colon double forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash 32913646414908 Origin of Writing In this video of Applied Linguistics Group, we're going to talk about the history of the concept of the written word. Writing is one of mankind's most endearing technologies for 5,600 years. This ability to transmit thoughts over generations, to give instructions to express ourselves, to communicate ideas over the gulf of space and time has allowed us to make vast strides in our understanding of the universe. Our understanding of each other and our understanding of ourselves. But to understand how writing began, we have to travel back to ancient summer, where the first widespread use of writing started. Look around. What do you see? Yes. You see the potters and the merchants. You see streets and gardens. But what do you see looming over all of it? The temples. These temples play a huge part in why writing began for you. The summer was the land of the world's first real cities, not hundreds of people or thousands of people, but tens of thousands grouped together. And these cities formed city-states bound together by the veneration of a specific set of gods. The people mastered irrigation and to the cities grew, and as the cities grew, so too did the temples to the gods. But these massive... Sprawling temple complexes didn't serve only as houses of worship. No, no. Look close. Do you see the men bringing in the clay pitchers full of grain? These temples also served as enormous warehouses repositories for the vast wealth of the city. In good times, donations and gifts would come flooding in and in lean times they would be distributed. Checkout system created vast wealth for the priests but it also ensured that cities of this size could function. But we're not concerned with that. Not directly. Look next to the man bringing in the grain. Do you see that man watching them? Notice how every time they bring in a jar of grain, he makes a little mark on that clay tablet. He's holding with an economy of this size with tons of supplies moving in and out of the temple each day. They needed to keep records somehow and that is exactly what he's doing. That tablet will later be stored so that priests can know what exactly they have on hand in their giant temple warehouse. But as much as tally marks have their place in the origin of writing, there's something far more interesting. For us on that wet piece of clay he's got in. His hands, you see. He's drawn a little picture of a grain stalk next to his tally marks so it's clear that his tally is referred to grain. Well over the generations that nice little drawing of grain would get simpler, more abstracted scribes looking for quicker and easier ways to note common goods, but wouldn't laboriously draw every single item coming into the temple, but instead came to an agreed-upon set of more symbolic representations for the goods flowing into the holy places. And you can see how somebody might quickly realize that those symbols could represent not only the concept of something, but the word itself, and that's exactly what happened. The symbol for a cow came to be understood not only as a representative of the animal, but also of the word cow. But still there's not much you can do with just a set of 1000 or so nouns. And here's where a happy accident of linguistics comes in. You see the people talking around the temple. Well, if you could hear them, it would sound like Everybody was just saying the same few words over and over again. And that's because Sumerian is a language where most of the words are just single syllables, and where concepts are built out of putting words to together. 
Both of those points are important because when many of your words are monosyllables, it's easy to go from thinking of a symbol as a word to thinking of it as a sound for that word to go from. Thinking of the symbol for you, meaning just the sheep to thinking of it as meaning the sound you and thus giving you the word for the tree you or the person you. Once you do this, you're no longer drawing pictures for every word in the language. Now you're starting to think of those pictures as sounds and stringing sounds together lets you build up all sorts of words. And once you couple that with the fact that in Sumerian many concepts were built up out of basic words. So, for example, sickle plus grain might mean harvest. There's a huge amount you can do with the concepts and sounds that 1000 or so images represent. But we're not done yet because the very medium describes we're writing on changed how we write in the West today. You remember how our buddy in the temple tallying the grain was making his marks on a clay tablet. Well, watch him write. See how he's writing from top to bottom, just as you would if you were making a list. Well, that would soon change because the problem with clay is that it takes forever to dry. And so if you accidentally set your hands down while you're riding from top to bottom, you can easily obliterate whole sections of the column you just wrote. But this risk is reduced if you start writing from left to right, but a lot of the people in the temple didn't like that innovation. It was easier on the scribes, but for the other literate. Folks who had to read it, they had learned to read from top to bottom, and so they didn't like this sideways thing at all. So what did the scribes do? Well, they simply rotated all of the characters 90 degrees so that a person could turn the tablet and read it from top to bottom, just like they always had. Soon people were just reading the sideways characters left to right, but because they've been flipped now, they were even more abstracted even further from the pictures and the things that they originally represented. This writing system was then adopted by the neighboring Akkadians and Elamites, who abstracted it even further. Determinatives or little markers to designate what part of speech something was in case it was ambiguous. Also got added and now you got a real rating system. The original pictures and even the pictograms they became vanished entirely into wedge-shaped impressions and lines. Strokes made by the stylists favored at the time, which means instead of simply a handful of nouns to record storage lists. We have a system for writing that can give us things as abstract and lyrical as the epic of Gilgamesh or the Enuma Elish. So how do we know all this? Well, funny thing about clay. When a place is burned down and all of your writing is on clay rather than it being destroyed, the writing hardens and becomes prose. Served, but that won't happen here for some time. So let's just... Celebrate what scribes like this one and the marvelous city of summer gave us a gift that has lasted us more than five and a half thousand years. Writing now, since we don't get to do the lies episodes for these one-offs, I also want to point out that this is just the first place in history where writing achieved widespread use. Later it would be developed independently in Mesomersia and was almost certainly developed independently in China. There's a great deal of contention about whether it developed independently in the Indus Valley and Egypt, although from what we've read, which admittedly isn't nearly enough to form anything more than a layman's opinion, I'm more in the camp that both of these groups inherited the basic concept. Some humor. Anyway, let us know in the comments if you liked this little experiment and are as interested in the history of ideas as the history of societies and peoples. If so, We'll try to do this from time to time. Who knows, maybe we'll even cover how we moved from the Sumerians, writing syllables to that incredible tool, the alphabet that most Western cultures still use today. Origins of Writing The Egyptians, Sumerians, and Semites originally wrote with a pictographic, meaning picture writing, form of writing. Some believe that the Sumerians were the originator of writing, while others attribute it to the Egyptians. Both the Sumerians and Egyptians came into existence after the flood of Noah. Did writing originate after the flood? Pre-flood pictographic writings, figure 5, have been found in Mesopotamia, Henry H. Halley, Halley's Bible Handbook, Grand Rapids, Me, Zondervan, 24th, 
44-5, implying a pre-Sumerian and pre-Egyptian origin of writing. The first record of writing in the Bible is found in Genesis 4.15. Then the Lord put a mark on Cain so that no one who found him would kill him. The Hebrew word for mark is, ot, and is also the Hebrew word for a letter and God may have written a letter on Cain. Some linguists attribute the development of the first true alphabet to the Phoenicians. But some scholars believe that the Phoenicians actually adopted the alphabet from a prior Semitic culture. John Philip Cohen, The Key, New York, Crown, 1969. The actual origin of the alphabet cannot be proven. Spread of the written word. Cultures in the 3rd and 2nd millennia BCE were not really literate societies. Once writing became abstract, rather than pictorial, only a small number of merchants, administrators, and elites would have had enough schooling to read and write. It is thought that only 1% of Egyptians were literate. Ancient rulers used writing to manage the information on which their states ran, not to disseminate it. Royal political inscriptions might be combined with imagery, and it seems that the masses would have read only the images while their writing was aimed at fellow elites and at posterity. Assyrian kings, for instance, buried inscriptions in the foundations of temples, recording their exploits so that future kings rebuilding those temples would read them. From alphabets to printing. Gradually writing systems became simpler and more sophisticated, but the spread of written communication was slow until the invention of printing during the European Renaissance. At first, Written symbols represented a variety of words, syllables, ideas, or sounds. The concept that every symbol should denote a sound was an innovation in the Middle East and led to the alphabet. The first alphabetic writing, with each sign representing a consonant but with no vowels, appeared in the second millennium BCE, using adapted Egyptian hieroglyphs. The people of Ugarit in Syria developed a cuneiform alphabet but the need for clay prevented its spread. Alphabets became important in 1000 to 700 BCE, being used for Hebrew, Aramaic and Phoenician writing. The Phoenicians used separate signs for vowels, influencing both Greek and Latin writing. The earliest surviving American writing is on 600 BCE Zapotec monuments in Mexico and records the names of sacrificed captives. Later inscriptions on Maya monuments record conflicts between city-states. The cultures of the Andes developed Quipu, a system that recorded numerical information with patterns of knots on webs of color-coded string. The spread of written material was hampered by the need to copy by hand. But with the invention of the Gutenberg printing press in 1454, it now became possible to produce books quickly and cheaply on a large scale. Applied Linguistics Group uploaded this video for BS English students. Dr. Khalid Malik is the founder of Applied Linguistics Groups and he has a PhD in Applied Linguistics to Seoul. He published more than 25 research papers. He taught a lot of foreign universities and presently admitted to a postdoctoral study in a Canadian university. Join Applied Linguistics Group at youtube.com forward slash at 1966 Pakistani or copying or downloading a QR code to join at https colon double forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash 32913646414908 3.